When we train, we train our muscles to produce more power, to be able to move our bodies faster, to get a great takeoff, to sprint at maximum velocity. However, how do we know that the training that we are actually doing is actually making those muscles faster and more powerful? We're going to take a look at muscle fibre and in particular how it adapts to training. This was prompted in response to a question I got from James in regard to one of my other videos on fast twitch muscle fibre and he queries and brings up some good points about muscle fibre, transference, adaptability and predominance of certain muscular fibre types. James brings up a really good point about the transitional fibres and talks about how they may be the most responsive to training if I've understood his comments right. And I did some more research and there is quite a lot out there that does now start to identify the importance of the transitional fibres and how those may adapt more to training than the type 2Bs. It seems that type 2B fibres are given to us at birth as it were and can't be changed that much by training. However, type 1, type 2A and type 2X fibres seem to be more able to be transitioned by appropriate training. And appropriate training seems to be crucial. On screen you're going to see some research that I've discovered that looks at the stretch shortening cycle and how plyometric training affects muscle fiber composition and also there's some sprint research which looks again at fiber transference and changes in response to a six week if I recall properly period of sprint training amongst sprinters. In his communication, James is not quite sure as to what happens to muscle fibre in response to what he calls short end training, so plyometric training in particular, as he indicates that even with weightlifters and sprinters, there is a transition more to type 2X, type 2A fibres. A programme of plyometric training can increase the rate of discharge, the power of type 1, type 2A and type 2X fibres and also their cross-sectional area, i.e. their size. So plyometric training, which is obviously key to what we do as jumpers and sprinters, could actually have a greater effect on positively transferring fibre types to produce greater power outputs. One piece of research relatively recent from 2022 does indicate the ability of muscle fibre to shift in its contractile properties and I'll just read the concluding line. Current evidence using the most appropriate techniques suggests a clear ability of fibres to shift between hybrid and pure fibres as well as between slow and fast fibre types. Additionally, more research indicates that weight training alone won't produce more powerful muscles that are going to be beneficial to sprinting and jumping. Yes, they may produce a foundation of additional strength, stroke power, that we can tap into when sprinting and jumping, thus boosting speed and power. But on its own, weight training does not really produce greater speed gains, for example, when it comes to sprinting. What, however, can be more beneficial is combining weights and plyometrics into the same workout. Now, I have talked about that quite a few times in previous videos. We're talking about the potentiating effects of combining powerful exercises together. So a jump squat, for example, and a power clean. Both are going to create a neural stimulation which is going to potentiate the muscle fiber recruitment of each exercise. Theoretically and practically, you'll be able to gain more power from your movements by combining exercises in that way. The issue, however, in terms of the subject matter of this video, in terms of muscle fiber transference, will still be a cloudy one, as whether or not the gains from those power combination complex contrast sessions would be in terms of a gain in fast twitch muscle fiber type 2B types, or whether or not it's more of a neural potentiating central nervous system neuromuscular response. I think, however, we don't need to worry ourselves so much about what actually happens. 
rather than the fact that something positive does happen in terms of powerful movement creation from power combination training. Basically, I'm saying that it's preferential to do complex and contrast training as opposed to weight training alone. Sports science that does exist regarding muscle fibre transference and trainability is compromised in many ways by the methodologies that the researchers use, whether or not they're looking at athlete development long term, which of course it needs to be, and also the specific populations that are being targeted. It will be much more beneficial to look at sprinters over the course of their training year and look at how their muscle fibres adapted according to the phases of training that they were going through rather than look at, for example, sports science physical education students over a very limited six-week period. As I pointed out in my fast twitch muscle fibre training video, one way to increase the power output of your muscles is through a taper, through a peak detraining and in fact one of the only ways that has been shown whereby muscle fibre can adapt more of a type 2b potentiality is through detraining. Not using muscles may result in a transition to as I've said type 2b fibre types. This is why the rest and recovery aspects of a training program are crucial. If you overtrain, then the adaption to your training will be compromised. And not only that, you may miss out on the body's seemingly natural capability of returning slower muscle fibre types to faster muscle fibre types simply through inactivity. In order to become better jumpers, sprinters and coaches, we do need to understand some of the sports science behind how training affects our muscles and energy systems, for example. There are a lot of variables with which we need to be able to manipulate in order to get the most positive results. So I hope the information that I've provided in this video will help you better understand fast twitch muscle fiber and how it can adapt to training and what methods and modes can work the best. If you have any specific questions on the subject matter of this particular video, then do leave them in the comments section below or through my other social media. And as usual, good luck with your training and any competitions that you've got coming up. My most recent coach athlete members video takes a look at biomechanical data. So again, a topic that we need to know about as coaches and athletes. And it specifically focuses on the triple jump. So if you'd like to find out more about variables such as angular velocity, contact times, phase ratio, and the ability to express power through the phases and how that reflects biomechanics, then do head over to the channel's homepage click on the join button and you'll be able to become a channel member at coach athlete level. There are 28 other coach athlete videos so the information will help you become a better athlete and a coach.